I bought a new car. I bought a brand new car. I've never owned a new car before. It's got that new car smell right off the lot. I've never had that. I had to get a new car because I crashed my own one. And uh, my old car was a 2005 Dodge Caliber, 380,000 miles, driving around your country doing comedy. This car has technology I didn't know existed. It's got this one feature that if you merge in or out of the lane without using your directional, your car will turn into a nagging wife. <laughs> you start to drift off a little bit, the car goes, hey, 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 hey. I'm like, all right, relax. We're going to your mother's, take it easy. <laughs> it's got a reverse camera, which I'm sure some of you have, this big massive screen thing. I went, oh, how lazy are we? That we can't even look over our shoulders anymore just to check for stray children. <laughs> so I became very snobby, like a hippie. Right? I, got, I, got, I was like, ugh, look at this technology. In this day and age, do we own technology? Or is technology starting to own us? <laughs> I got on my high horse. This high horse lasted about two days because on the second day I had the car, it was raining. So I guess the camera got clogged up with water because when I put it in reverse, all that came up on the screen was a big watery blob. And ugh, what is this? I got to turn my head like a poor person now? I was, I was like, what am I, Amish? I don't... <laughs> has kicked in, my neck no longer turns that way anymore. <laughs> I was in a car crash, my, I had an old car, I wrecked it, I was driving home from a show uh, and my car it was raining and my car hydroplaned. Uh, I hit the divider and then my car flipped over. Yeah, and then over again and I finally came to a rest on its side. Now hydroplane, that's a word I learned after my accident. <laughs> Because America, you're great people to have around after a crisis. Everyone I told, oh, hydroplane, what you should have done, what you should have done is slow down to 50 mile an hour, pull into the middle lane, and you would have been okay. Yeah, where were you when I left that night? The same thing happened to me on a beach out on Long Island, New York. I was swimming. I got caught in a riptide. We don't have riptides like that in Ireland. Six surfers had to come out and get me. Do you know how embarrassing it is? To be sitting on a beach while six surfers walk up to you and individually tell you what you should have done in a riptide? <laughs> oh, look, it's very easy. Next time you get caught in a riptide, just, just swim parallel to the shore till you come out of it and you'll be okay. Really, it's that easy, is it? Put up a sign, maybe. <laughs> I'm sitting there shivering with a blanket around me. This little girl walks by with her father. What happened to that man, Daddy? Oh, he got caught in a riptide, sweetheart. Doesn't he know he's supposed to swim parallel to the shore? <laughs> foreigners. <laughs> so my car flipped over, right? Now, I'm driving along and I had an iPod which was hooked to my stereo and I was listening to you 2 obviously. And, uh, <laughs> and as my car flipped over, my iPod shuffled <laughs> to one of my wife's awful Barbra Streisand songs. So I'm spinning through the ear, and instead of bracing for impact, I'm just reaching for the iPod. I'm like, oh, not now, Barbara, it's not a good time. Please, no. Because the last thing I need to be found dead at the bottom of a wreckage by a hunky fireman who couldn't wait to go home, knock on my door, tell my widow, hey, we found your husband. Turns out he was lighting the loafers, did you know that? <laughs> but it's amazing what goes to your mind, right? You're not, your life doesn't flash before your eyes. You're too busy just going to the bathroom on yourself. That's what happens. And you're not concerned about your own health and your own well-being. Being Irish, I was more concerned about, well, how much of an inconvenience am I being to these other people right now? I'm on the highway, my car is taking up three lanes and I'm sideways, okay? And I'm listening and all I can think of was, was Carrie Underwood, you're a liar. <laughs> Jesus, take the wheel. Yeah, Jesus did show up, but he was a small Mexican guy named Jesus. And he dragged me from the fiery wreck. He's like, it's okay, I take the wheel for you. I got to take the wheel for you. <laughs> and I'm worried about this, this line. And I'm lying there sideways. And I see these legs come run towards me, right? That was Jesus. And he goes, sir, you have to get out of your car. <laughs> Here's what I said. I went, I know, uh, I'm okay. <laughs> I'm gonna hang out here for a while. Um, I didn't put you out, did I? He went, no, your car, she burns. I go, all right, so I climb up the car, I jump out, I land on the highway, the ambulance come, they pick me up, bring me straight to the hospital, and they put me right in the waiting room. Yes, the waiting room, because that's where you should put somebody who flipped over in a car twice. <laughs> So 
So I'm sitting in a room, in the waiting room, there's these televisions around the room, and News 12, the local news is on. My accident is on television. And I'm looking at the traffic, is just backed up for miles. And everybody's in the waiting room going, see, see, look at this idiot now, holding up everything. So I get paranoid and I join in. I go, yeah, let's all hope he's dead. I am married. I married one of you. I married a girl from your country. And uh, round of applause if you're married. There you go. That's nice. How long are you married, sir? Eight years, that's lovely. Miss, quick question. Is he any good at buying you gifts? Yeah. He's good. I like the hesitation too. That's convincing. <laughs> See, there's two types of guys in the world. Girls, you know if you have one. Lads, you know if you are one. Amazing at buying gifts. You know what I'm talking about, girls? On Valentine's, your birthday, something magical. You get a little black box and like, oh, I, oh, I don't know what it is. Oh, it could be anything. I don't know. And you'll open up and go, oh, a seashell. You go, that's right, honey. You remember four years ago when you and I took that walk on the beach and this, the sun was slowly setting behind you. You looked down and you said, isn't that the most beautiful seashell you've ever seen? I went back and I got it for you and I, uh, I engraved our special date on it, made it into a necklace and now you have a, a shell. Um, <laughs> there's guys like that and then there's guys like me. Look, tell me what you want and I'll go get it for you. We're not bad people, we just need guidance. It was our birthday not so long, would you get me perfume? I went, no problem. Girls, don't do that. Tell us what perfume you want. Because if you used to get me a blender, no problem, easy peasy. Turn on television, look at the commercials, go online. Have you ever seen a commercial for perfume? They're no help to us whatsoever. They're usually black and white and they take place at a fancy ball with people wearing masks. There's always a gorgeous woman in a beautiful dress and she's been chased through the crowd by a creepy guy in a tuxedo. Her pearl necklace, oh, it will break open for some reason. She'll go running down the steps, her shoe goes flying off. She'll jump onto a horse and gallop away, grab onto a ladder which is attached to a helicopter, get whisked out of sight, and the creepy guy that was chasing her comes down the stairs looking very confused and then fades to black and goes, Je t'aime, j'entends rien pas. I own two children. I own, uh, <laughs> I own two uh, American kids, little ones. Round of applause if you're a parent. Any young parent? Yeah, nice. <laughs> nice. How many kids do you have? Three. Three kids. One of each? Five. <laughs> <laughs> yes? Okay. Um, <laughs> a boy, girl, boy, what do, you, what do you have? Two girls and a boy. Okay, two girls and a boy. That's lovely. That's, did you have a dance recital yet for the girl? And she into dance? She does that? No? Any kids into dance? No? Or you have a kid into dance? Oh, sorry, I thought you put your hand up. My daughter had her very first dance recital, a little girl, and she had her very first dance recital the other day, and it was in front of a thousand people in this auditorium. She looked about this big on a stage, monstrous. She up to the four minute solo all by herself, and, uh, and halfway through her routine, I got choked up. I got very teary eyed because seeing my little girl alone on that stage, I realized as a father, I have been wasting so much money on dance lessons. <laughs> She's absolutely terrible. I was like, what is this? This is, no, no, her dress costs more than my car. That's ridiculous. 